Welcome back. Let's have a look on analytics and a little bit on the auditing perspective of Safeguard. So what we're going to show now is how to initiate a session and then have a look in a little bit more deeper details into that. So first thing we're going to do is just request a session. So log into the requester with the password. Pretty easy, straightforward as usual. New request. Uh, select the domain controller. In this case, I, we're gonna we're gonna do this on RDP. This is a graphical protocol, so that is just to demonstrate that we ha have the capability to look even into that protocols. So go click on next. Select the uh, account. You, all, you in this case you only have one, and submit the request. And here it is. Next thing, as usual, click on that stuff download the RDP file, wait until it's there and then double click on it, type in the magical SG and click on OK. And if anything goes OK, you should be logged in into that system. So here we are. Send, we, now we are using the privileged account that has been granted to us and now we're gonna fire up some kind of applications. We have a couple of them installed here. So whatever we want, let's maybe use PowerShell as well. This will be a nice demo later. So here's our PowerShell. Here we go. So, so we have a couple of windows open here. We're removing the mouse. Now we close that window. We have our database studio coming up here in the background that will easily slow our system much more, but we don't care. So we are now here on our, on our PowerShell, for instance. Like to give it some kind of nice commands. I think I'm more a Unix guy in this case. So what I want to show you, so just for later, so if you move this a little bit out of the window, so I'm just maybe just go more to the top, uh, more to the bottom, and now move this down here so that you cannot see it, and type in whatever the CD, whatever, just a couple of, uh, of stuff we want to see. Okay, now we are see, going to see a couple of, of uh, applications and of course we have this little out of screen window. So that should be it for the moment. Uh, oh, we don't need to log out. We just keep it running, maybe much more easier. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our system here and we're going to go to our browser again. So that's our clients and here we have our browser. So we can just leave this open, just open another tab and we're gonna log in to the SPS, the safeguard for privileged session proxy. We log in as the admin, use the password. And now with the latest version 6.4 you're gonna be taken automatically to the audit page or to the search interface. So you're gonna see all the current active sessions that are proxied through the system and you still see that there's one active session over there. This is the my session that I'm still having here in the background. And let's go back to this one for a moment. And now we're gonna close all this and we're gonna log out for this one. Okay, so just signing out, session is over and it should be update in a second. So you now see this, this session is no longer active. And now you see that uh, now here appears something like interesting events. And it is it writes here PowerShell. So I, it has detected somehow that I was using PowerShell in my, in my actions. And this is done via the uh, indexing functionality we have in our system. And we just click on the details here. And you're going to see that it has Lots of lots of nice printouts over here. So there's some kind of administration PowerShell. There's the file explorer and there should be somewhere a little bit more. Just click on the next for the next page. So there has, we have a connection to the server and so on and so on. So all the nice little windows we have opened will appear more or less here in that list. And these lists are extracted from the graphical representation of that screen via optical character recognition. This is one of the features of the indexing machine. But we have a little bit of more, because if you click more to the details or for the events tab, you see 
where these events are listed again and you have contents. So more or less you have a very nice overview and a deep dive into this what's going on here. So at the, at the first site you can say which commands the user has executed and what you have seen on the screen. The next thing you could see is about uh, automatic replay or replay a saved session. You see there's a little option here over in this title bar called start rendering. And this is something that is a little bit specific to that solution because we are not using something like screenshotting uh, to record a session. We are going to re record the graphical protocol as it comes via the wire. So it is more or less network traffic that is being captured. And to re-render this into some, something we can display on the screen, we are now going to re-render the protocol we have recorded into some kind of graphical representation. And to do this, before you are able to review this, just click on Start Rendering. And now it is just processing all the data to give you some kind of video. So that takes a little time. And here we are. And now after this has been done, this just gives you that play video button. And this will call the player. And now this data is fed into that player. And now you can replay all these nice little sessions you have taken. Just click on the play button. And then you're going to see what has happened in the screen, on the screen as it was before. So we now hopefully see more or less our windows opening and you see a couple of white or more light stuff here in, the, in, in that bar. This is where a couple of events happening like program starting, windows opened, type, type, typing done or whatever. And you can have additional ones here. You for instance can enable a replay of the keyboard. So everything I was, every time I was typing something on the keyboard, you're going to see it later. Now let's just move on here a little bit and you can just jump to the events one by one. And you see there's a couple of typing I have done. It was as I was just filling the screen and so on and so on. And now I was moving the window out of sight. And if we just go here, now I was doing some typing more or less. And then I was typing some dear CD or something and you didn't see that, but the protocol that is recorded, it saw that commands I typed in. So even if you move your window out of the screen, there's no way to hide. And that's a very unique feature. So just coming back to the recording we have just taken or the session we have just viewed and reviewed and uh, taken a deeper look into it. One of the things we failed or I failed was about there was no analytics. So it was nice to see now why there is no analytics configured. So the usual way you now have to track that down, maybe an error, uh, just click on the configuration part of that menu in the SPS. And you're going to be taken to the standard configuration task you can execute here. And what the interesting thing here is about RDP control. RDP control hosts all the appropriate sessions of the RDP protocol proxying stuff that is into in that product. So the first thing we're going to have is a look into the connection. The connection is just a list of the proxy rules. And we only have one proxy rule available. This is called safeguard underscore RDP. And if we expand this a little bit and move down to these various options. There are lots of it. The first thing we need is about indexing. So indexing and analytics needs to be enabled both to see it. And indexing was enabled and we have seen a couple of stuff that was extracted from the protocol stream that is indexing. But it was, wasn't anal analyzed, so the analytics part was missing. And analytics usually is enabled to assign something called an analytics policy. And as you see here, I just simply forgot to assign that policy. So let's use the default policy. And before we can change this or this is changed, just you need to commit that. Okay, here we are. And just to have a look into the policy that we have just configured or we have just enabled, you can go to the policies entry over here. 
and there is something that is called an analytics policy and it's at the current moment there's only default and if you expand this you see the various algorithms this is taken into consideration when analyzing the protocol data that was recorded so once we have done this it's effective so we're gonna go back to our connection not this one we're gonna go back to our browser in the safeguard view and we're gonna download the RDP data again now okay we need the browser so let's get back to our management here from the SPS and let's go to the search interface again oh we have done something unusual behavior and this is something we simply get from the analytics so now we see that analytics is working and we see we have a risk score of 100 percent there's pretty much weird stuff going on and we have done something unbelievable wrong so oh just kidding uh, so it's just to show you if you assign a policy and you're doing weird stuff you're going to see something like that and of course not to forget let's have a look into the analytics just for info so click on the details and now you see a little bit more as this was uh, displayed before we have the same events we have details uh, we have alerts now we don't have any alerts at the moment we have uh, contents we could search our indexed file if we want and now we have the analytics with it here and now you see all these nice little 100 percent unusual behavior and if you want to see why this has been flagged just scroll down a little bit and you see this is host login is a little bit strange for the for this algorithm and the other ones like the login time or the windows title this seems to be pretty normal but it does not seem to be very happy that i log into my domain controller and this is usually something you should do on a very rare situation with a direct rdp connection of course you can log in with a, to to the domain controller but usually you do this via management tools and not with direct session access of course so this is what something that was flagged that makes it unusual and it should be pretty unusual so that may be an indication to have a deeper look into it who has done this why and whatever this has uh, caused. Okay, that's it for now.